that connection is important. Yet in spite of the many ways to connect these days, our society is more disconnected than ever before. If you're looking for a place to connect, we know that you will find it at CCF. We are committed to providing you with opportunities to connect to a God who loves you, to connect to authentic people who are on a journey to become more like Jesus, and to connect to ways that you can make a difference in your local community. Connect with us to God, others, growth, and action. Take some time to explore our website or app, sign up for a life group or ministry team, and join us for a weekend service. Whether in person or online, CCF is a place to connect. So let's connect. God's so good, isn't he, church? He's so good. I'm going to ask that you just sit for a moment. I know that's really strange for us to start our service this way, but, but we need to, if that's okay, both online and live. I think it's important that we do so. I'd like to read a few things, and then I'd obviously I'd like to talk about the, the email that we sent out this week and share a little bit about our, our brother and our beloved pastor who has gone on ahead before us. A few years ago, I came across a poem that gave words to my heart during the loss of someone that I always 
deeply respected and cared for. And, but in so many ways, I feel like it was a poem that really spoke to my heart about something that yet was not completed on this side of heaven, and it's called Unfinished. We cannot judge a biography by its length nor by the number of pages in it. We must judge it by the richness of its contents. Sometimes those unfinished are among the most poignant. We cannot judge a song by its duration nor by the number of its notes. We must judge it by the way it touches and lifts our soul. Sometimes those unfinished are among the most beautiful. And when someone has enriched your life and when their melody lingers on in your heart, it is unfinished or is it endless? When God has someone in his keeping, he allows us the privilege of keeping them in our heart. They become endless to us. This past week, we shared the news regarding Pastor Mark that on May 12th, our beloved pastor and friend and brother went on ahead of us to receive his eternal reward and great it will be. Point your eyes to the screen as we just take a, a few glimpses at Pastor Mark as he's been with us. I recall one day asking her, Nellie, is there anything that I can do for you? And she said, do you have my Bible? And I said, well, I don't have it with me, but I'll bring it next time. She goes, okay, bring it next time. So I brought it next time, and she said, would you please read to me my favorite song? Psalm 23. And I read it to her, and it was the last time that we spoke. But as I read it, I realized that for her, it wasn't a psalm about death. It was a psalm about life. There was so much life in that psalm, and there's so much life for us in that psalm. It's not just about passing to the next. It's about the life that we get and the assurance that God is with us now, every day, through every dark valley. He is the restorer of our soul. And that's all possible because of what Jesus did on the cross. Jesus. Yeah. So several years ago, we had the gift and privilege to partner with the Free Methodist Church in Redlands. And it brought Pastor Mark and Robin into our life, along with amazing, amazing people that are now part of our family and hearts. And and Pastor Markey, of course, is a remarkable man, a devoted husband, an amazing pastor, diligent student, second career. I used to call him the spiritual engineer. That's where he came from. And compassionate servant, loyal friend. And he daily lived out the call to love God, others, and make disciples in so many ways. He inspired and he cared and he served and he taught and he demonstrated what it meant to be a man of God and a man after God's own heart. Our church is better because of him, and the kingdom is larger because of him. We will miss him, but his memory is endless in our heart, and our reunion will be sweet. Because I believe this so strongly, because as he greeted us and so many others so often and so well here on earth, I believe he too will greet us with greater enthusiasm at the gates of heaven. Amen. And to our beloved Robin, devoted wife, and in so many ways, Mark's equal partner in ministry. We love you, and we're praying for God's grace and comfort and courage 
and strength as you face the days ahead. You are not alone as our God closely abides and we too become the hands and heart and feet of Jesus for you. Robin has asked that in lieu of flowers that you can remember Pastor Mark by giving to one of his favorite places of ministry, the CCF Compassion Center and or Empowering Lives International. Cards and gifts, of course, can be brought and forwarded to us and we'll make sure we get them to her immediately. But I was recalling Pastor Mark and thinking through in some of the times that he's preached and I remember that he spoke on this very series on prayer and shared this very story of Psalm 23. So I'd like to say this because this is now my good friend and brother and pastor's present tense reality. The Lord is Mark Shepherd. He shall never, ever, ever again be in want. He makes Mark lie down in green pastures even if he doesn't like it. He'd rather be at the beach, to be honest with you. He leads Mark beside still waters and he restores Mark's soul and he leads Mark on the right path for his namesake and I bet he enjoys every moment of it. Even though Mark walked high, even though Mark walked through the valley, the darkest valley, he fears no evil for you, oh God, are with him right now and your rod and your staff, they comfort him. So comfort us, God. And you prepare a table before Mark in the presence of our enemies and you anoint his head with oil. And beloved church, his cup is overflowing and overflowing. Now, surely goodness and mercy follow our friend and our pastor all the days of his eternal life. So be assured, our friend Pastor Mark now dwells in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Amen. moments we're going to enter into worship which is Pastor Mark's real time reality right now and it would be a disservice to him and to our Lord if we didn't do it with full jubilee and joy and enthusiasm we grieve, we're sad, we have tears but we rejoice in the knowing that there's a sweet homecoming for all of us and a sweet reunion of the goodness of God so we're going to pull that reality right into our moment believing for God to meet us like he's never met us before. And on this Pentecost Sunday particularly, we're going to believe that he's going to show up, that the spirit of the living God is going to come full with wind and breath and fire to restore and to renew. And we're going to give him space and room because we welcome him here. We call him the guest of honor. We call him the one who comforts our friend and comforts us. How good is our God? Our God is so faithful that he can weep with us and rejoice with others, but at the same time, he can bring both realities into our heart. How good is our God that he comes and says that the Holy Spirit dwells within you and that he sees you as the perfect host. He sees you as a person who is willing to be hospitable, one that God has called and alleviated and has great hope for. So in this moment, when we worship our God, particularly the Holy Spirit today, we say you are welcome to do what you want to do. You are welcome to be all that you need to be. And you are welcome here in our heart. Would you stand to your feet? And I really believe that one of the sounds of heaven that God is calling to this moment is the sound of the people of God being grateful. I think God is attracted to a grateful heart, and I think it is the sound of the Holy Spirit hitting the people of God. And when the gratefulness of your heart hits the atmosphere of heaven, something begins to change in the environment. And the Holy Spirit says, that's a group of people I want to hang out with because they are advocating the goodness and thankfulness of who our God So would you, with your mouth, say, God, I am grateful for who you are. I am thankful for your goodness. Say it out loud as if you really mean it. So God, we're asking even now in this moment, show up and show off in Jesus' name.
sing that with me. Here we go.
So with your hands lifted high, 
let's wait on his promise holy spirit come holy spirit come we are simply believers in your promise just like they waited for your promise you told them to sit and wait and they saw the the, the reward they saw the the reward of your promise of waiting on it so today we say lord we're waiting on you we don't want to force anything to happen we don't want to do it on our own strength it's not by might not by power but by your spirit so we wait lord we wait with anticipation we wait not rushing not rushing in not rushing out we're just waiting like a church of believers that say lord we believe your promise that on that day your spirit would fall upon all flesh upon all flesh we believe your promise now so we wait and church what do we do when we wait we praise what do we do when we wait? We worship. So why don't you lift your worship? Abba, we believe in your promise. We believe in you. You've always been faithful. You've never shown yourself to be unfaithful. You've always been faithful. Your word has come true in the time, not the time that I wanted, but the time that you had already determined. Your promises have come true. Jesus came like you said. Jesus died on that cross like you said. And Jesus rose again like you said. Your Holy Spirit came to your church like you said. Your church spoke in tongues and prophesied like you said we had visions and dreams just like you said you've never let us down and you won't stop now you're the same God that met Moses and Abraham you're the same God that led Jesus you're the same God with us now we believe in your promise we believe in your promise we believe in your word we believe in what you've said and what you've spoken and if we haven't seen it yet it doesn't mean you let us down it just means it's not my time it's yours it is your time Jesus Holy Spirit yeah, let's just wait for him to come, guys. Yeah, yeah. Every part of us, my heart is open to you, Lord. Holy Spirit, come, come now. Yeah, we just wait for your promise. We wait for your promise. We wait. We wait for your promise. Can someone say that I will wait? I wait for your promise. I wait for the promise that you gave church we wait we wait we wait we wait we wait we wait you're always faithful we will wait we know what it's like to go ahead of you and it's not pretty but we know what it's like to wait
That's what happens when we read. <laughs> That's what happens when we read. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount on wings like an eagle and soar. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk. <laughs> And I think that's what happens when we wait. That's what happens when we wait. Come on, one more time. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like an eagle and soar. They shall run and not get weary. They shall run. Church, say hallelujah. hallelujah. He is 
worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. You deserve my highest praise, Jesus. You deserve my best praise. You deserve every ounce of my body. You created me with this purpose to give myself right back to you. You deserve it. 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 Every part of my praise. You deserve. Come on, church. You deserve it. Let's see it. You deserve it. You deserve it. <laughs> you deserve it. considering your options you're considering what you can come up with I'm considering <laughs> I'm considering thoughts you never could have thought of I'm considering options that never would have been born in your mind you consider where you are the city you're in the car that you drive the finances you have the people around you God considers the impossible so let's wait on him. Father, we wait on you today. We praise you because you can come up with anything whenever you want. And you are on our side. And you're not on our side because you're against somebody. You're on our side because you're telling us that we can trust you. We can wait. We can be confident that you want something good for us. Your will for me is good. So I can wait on you. Hallelujah. One last second. Just worship. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you for your presence. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound, like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them, and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Skipping down, it, it blows the mind of everybody around them. Every tribe, every tongue and nation is blown away. And it says here, all were amazed and perplexing to one another. What does this mean? And then we know that this, this is a whole new thing. And later on, that the question is not just what does this mean, but what should I do to be saved? That, that's what happens when the spirit of the Lord falls. And, and then Peter boldly gets up and he, sp he says, you know, in the last days it will be God declares and I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men and young women shall see visions. 
and your old men and your old women shall, I know you don't like to be called old, I'm sorry, more mature women shall dream dreams. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Yeah. Hmm. Ah. You, you may be seated for a moment, but don't, don't lose your, your posture of worship. I just, you're probably just going to need to rest for a second. Uh, we're not going to dismiss anybody, just in case someone was wondering. We're not going to show any more videos, just in case you were wondering. We're going to just be here for a minute. Yeah. So we've been learning about this prayer, the Lord's Prayer, in Matthew 6, and I've loved this series. But my question to you is that, you know, we can say the prayer, but if you don't have the power behind it, you're just saying nice words. If it doesn't change your life, then recognize that something religious has happened to you. I grew up in Canada, as many of you know, and every day we would sing the national anthem. We would say the Lord's Prayer, and every once in a while we would give homage to the Queen. And every day, as a young child, I would say the Lord's Prayer, but I didn't know what it meant. No one explained it to me, because right after the prayer, the teacher just would hit the chalkboard. Yes, I said chalkboard. <laughs> and just get on with the lesson. I, Every day I would say that prayer. I had no idea what was happening in my life, who I was praying to, if that person was even listening. But I have to believe at that moment that there were seeds sown in my heart. Right? There was something happening in my heart. I, 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 I had an unknown God, but a God that knew me. And something was being to happen. And that prayer, of course, has been spoken all over the world. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I, I think we're experiencing a little bit of that right now. Right? Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Right? And lead us not into temptation, right? But deliver us from evil. Then the prayer just ends. It's just so weird. There's this like, there's the punctuation, end. And it was later that the people of God began to add this phrase, but yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory and forever, amen. And we recognize that that prayer is not found in your earliest manuscripts, but it was found in the earliest of the church readings. And so it became kind of a natural thing for us in our tradition to add that phrase. It, you, you know why that phrase was not added? Why Jesus didn't just tag it on on the end? Because the natural response of the people of God when the Holy Spirit fell upon them was to sing the doxology right after. So that when the period stopped at the end of the prayer and deliver us from the evil one, they just broke out in spontaneous praise and adoration. They couldn't help themselves. They, at the time, they could reach back to the Old Testament scriptures where they would begin to proclaim the kingdom and the glory and the power forever. But now it was present tense reality. The kingdom and the glory and the power was right in front of them. And so the spontaneity of worship and adoration began to be a normal thing for the people of God. In my holy imagination, that when the people of God were gathered in the waiting for the Holy Spirit, the only prayer they wanted to pray, I believe, was this prayer. That they wanted to begin to proclaim who God was and have him meet us like he's never met us before. And there was just a, a spontaneity of his glory and his kingdom and his power forever. Amen. You see, we can say the prayer, but if we don't have the tagline, your kingdom, your glory, your power forever. Amen. Then it just becomes something we say, not someone we embrace. And there's something that Pentecost does is the release of the Holy Spirit says, now I understand how to really pray. Because when the Spirit of God who lives in me, the temple of the living God, becomes alive again, all I can do is proclaim His glory, His kingdom, His power forever and ever. Amen. If your prayer life seems dead, 
If it feels like it's not going anywhere, if you feel like you're just saying the same words over and over again, it might be because you've not invited the fullness of His Spirit into your life. It should be that when you begin to pray this prayer and add this tagline and call out the word amen, which by the way is the name of Jesus. Revelation is very clear. His name is amen. It's not just an idea of let it be so. It is let it happen now because of the truth of Jesus being present. So when we come to this moment and we recognize when we call out, we wait on the Lord, it's because the amen is entering the room to proclaim it to you. Let it be so and let it be done. If your prayer life is dead, you are not serving the resurrected Jesus who gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit who said so clearly, I'm alive and so should you. There should be nothing, beloved, that is buried in a tomb in your life. Oh, but pastor, you don't know. Oh, come on now. All God's people know the troubles we have seen. But on Pentecost, we were reminded his kingdom, his glory, his power forever. Amen. Amen. To let it be so. So don't, don't be like that little Canadian boy who's just reading the prayer and not knowing what it meant or who the prayer was towards. All the power of this prayer comes in that end. Amen. Well, I had a real fancy message for you. But I, why well, preach when we got this? I mean, really. Really. I have lots of cool facts about Pentecost. How it connects through all of God's word. But I'll, I'll give you these three things. Prayer begins with the idea of provision. It does. It's a prayer of provision, this, this Lord's Prayer, Pentecost Prayer. God, you will provide like you've never provided before. It's about first fruits. It's about giving to God. It's not just, re, just taking something. It's about a giving back to God and saying, God, you're about to do something like you've never done before. You, you poured out your first fruit at Passover with Jesus as the first fruit sacrifice of our life. And then you've called us as the Apostle Paul called us to be the first fruit living for him. Pentecost comes as a, as a second offering of first fruit. It, it's a place of provision. Absolutely. But I, I want to tell you, beloved, that's just the beginning. That, that's, just, that's just kindergarten prayer. That's just like, Lord, I, I need you, so provide. The next level of this prayer is promotion. That now you begin to understand, wait, wait a minute. It's more than what he can give me. It's what I can start living. That I can live in a promoted place of favor and authority and anointing. That, that what I face, just as, as my brother was saying, it's just like, wait a minute. You know, I, I'm anxious because i got to figure out what I need. But God says, I, I, I have some promotion for you. I, I have something much more for you. The, the, do you think the church could not could have kept on doing what it would, could have done if the Holy Spirit didn't show up? The sad reality is it certainly could because men and women like to organize things. We like to, we like to create things. We like to have some, some order to things and we like to group it together. It, it is but the Holy Spirit that makes us uniquely different. It promotes us to a place that says we're not just a little in-gathering of people. We're a people that have something to give, that we are something to contend with, that when we enter a space, something significantly should change in every space we hit. Because it's not just a club. It's a place of promotion from where you were to who you should be. But this is where it hit me the hardest this week. It's a prayer of privilege. Pentecost is the privilege. When you start getting to the understand that the Holy Spirit is in you and that you get to be actual hosts of the Holy Spirit, uh, you, He is, you, wait, you are His Airbnb. 
That's what you are. And he's already said, I give you a five-star rating. Keep it up. That, that's who, we, who you are. It, it's a privilege to have this kind of relationship. And if, if you don't understand that, then you don't understand the fullness of Pentecost. It, it moves you now to a place of deeper intimacy that wherever I go, God goes with me. The early disciples needed this because Jesus ascended. And they're like, where are you going? He goes, don't worry. Something and someone is coming that's better than I. And now this beautiful privilege is our intimate relationship with Jesus so that when we pray kingdom, glory, power forever, amen, it's not just something out there. It's something in here. In our prayer time, man, I'll tell you, that was, that was church before church. Whew. Shabbat, so good. In that moment, I was sitting there thinking, God, who am I to talk about your Holy Spirit? Who am I to talk about your Holy Spirit? And it was just the goodness of God that says, who are you not to? I, I, it's a different kind of question, isn't it? And this is what the Lord says. I don't say this in arrogance. I don't say this to say, oh, look at me. He says, praise God, you host me well. Of course you can talk about me. It's not just some educational book on the five things you need to know about the Holy Spirit. I live in you. I'm a part of you. This is going to blow your mind even more. The more I become like Jesus, the more he says to me, I want to be like you. It's not heretical. I know it sounds crazy, but we should be living at such a level that when God sees us, he goes, that's my Imago Dei. That's what I look like. That's what I look like. That's what I look like. That's, that's, that's what I would say. I, I know you're like, oh, no. Privileged level of living is what God has called us to. So I'm wrestling in there and I'm like, God, I don't know. I don't know what that means. Then my friend Christina came up to me. She goes, hey, I got a word for you, private words for you. I'm going to share it with you. She goes, it's really weird, but when I walked in the room, I saw that your head was blown off. Okay. That, that's, a, that's a good word. But what she saw was out of my heart was fire flowing through my head. So my head was gone. And it was just that word that was a confirmation again that the Holy Spirit lives in me. And the Holy Spirit lives in you. And the Holy Spirit wants to do something radically different than we've ever done before. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to pray a prayer that I wrote. And I'm just going to get out of the way. Probably even get out of here because i got to be somewhere. i got to go bless this other pastor who's retiring. But I trust you all just to be yourselves. And maybe, maybe some of you will notch down of yourself. But I'm believing for what God wants to do in this space. Are you? Pentecost was a time of expectation and hunger. It was a time for the people of God to say, he's about to do something like he's never done before. Are we coming with that expectation? If you leave this time the same, whose fault is that? That's why I'm going to leave early so you can't yell at me. I mean, whose fault is that? God doesn't have to do one more thing to impress you. All he's saying is, it's a privilege to be like me. Why why not go for that? Amen? So why don't you stand to your feet? They're going to sing and do their thing. You're going to have to pick up your kids because that's only fair to the kids' own people. Okay, I'm not kidding. Don't leave them in there. Bring them all in the room. That's we're going to break a few rules. I know. It's all right. Well, we'll just be careful, okay? Please be careful. But get them, bring them in. Let them experience who God is and see that witness in you. Okay? It's my prayer. And then you're just going to do what you need to do. And Joanne's going to wrap it all up. All right. Cool. Ready? 
Come, O Holy Spirit. Come as holy fire and burn in us. Come as holy wind and cleanse within us. Come as holy light and lead us, God. Come as holy truth and dispel our ignorance. Come as holy power and enable our weakness. Come as holy life and dwell in us. Convict us, convert us, consecrate us until we are what? Set free from the of ourselves to be your servants of the world. Here we go, you ready? Holy Spirit, in the beginning you breathed and hovered over creation and spoke to the formless, indistinguishable ruin, chaotic, confused, and empty space. And with every breath, word of your spirit, your creative power, you brought forth from chaos, beauty and order, receive it. So come again, Holy Spirit, with your creative power and release beauty and order into our chaos. Even right now, I declare over you, if you have a place in your body that needs to be healed, let the beauty and order of God restore it. Holy Spirit, you spoke through the voices of the prophets, matriarchs, and patriarchs of your people. You are empowering and engulfing them with the eternal flame, fashioned with holiness and truth and grace. Holy Spirit, you spoke through the voices of the saints of the ancient past who proclaimed justice, compassion, righteousness, and hope. So come again, Holy Spirit, and speak through your presence, saints, to aid us in proclaiming your love, your justice, and hope. Holy Spirit, you breathe life into your word to guide and convict and instruct and remind us of every word of our beloved Savior, Jesus. So come again, Holy Spirit, and burn within our hearts your holy word so that we would know you more clearly. Holy Spirit, your power brings the jubilee of the good news to the poor, healing of the sick, delivering of the possessed, and the release of the captive. So come again, Holy Spirit, and use us to proclaim your spirit of freedom that breaks the power of sin and death. Holy Spirit, you are our advocate and teacher who speaks to us of the way, the truth, and the life of Jesus. So come again, Holy Spirit, and overflow in us your way, your truth, and your life. Holy Spirit, you are wind and fire and breath, and you filled every disciple with boldness and courage and hope and joy, empowering them to proclaim your word and share your good news. So come again, Holy Spirit, and embolden within us the courage to proclaim your love, all your love in our words and action. Holy Spirit, God of unity and peace, who on Mount Sinai and in the upper room broke the barriers of culture and healed the visions through your grace. So come again, Holy Spirit, great reconciler, and use us as an ambassador to heal the canyons between us and make us the answer to your prayer in John 17, that we are one as you are one. Holy Spirit, we surrender our minds to your understanding, our eyes to your seeing, our ears to your hearing, our hearts to your loving, and our mouths to your proclaiming. And now, Holy Spirit, get ready, church. Breathe on us as we give you this day and our lives so that we are refreshed. Say it with me, refresh, renewed, recreated, and ready to proclaim your kingdom, your power, your glory forever and ever. Amen and amen and amen. Come again, Holy Spirit.